guys, welcome to Wife School episode four. Today we have a special guest on the channel. Tell them about yourself, Maggie. Hi everyone, I am Maggie, the substitute teacher, and I'm here to teach Pearl how to cook. so excited to meet just pearly things i've been watching her for a while and especially when she started the wife school this is something i'm really passionate about so i'm really excited if you guys know lead attorney he's got his little youtube group right and he asked me to talk to his youtube group they do self-development but like for youtube so they help each other with thumbnails titles whatever so me you know some would say a youtube connoisseur <laughs> Yeah, um, I went in to talk to them and Maggie asked me a question about YouTube and shot her shot at coming to England and working with me. And I said, if this girl wants to fly all the way to England to teach me how to cook, <laughs> so be it. In all seriousness, you know, because I've always struggled with weight, like I said, I do have whale tendencies. <laughs> I'm 47, mm -hmm. and in my 40s, the weight problem started to turn into a health problem. Um, I used to be pre-diabetic, I used to have elevated cholesterol, and I used to have borderline blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And it's all normal now without any medication because I've changed the way that I eat and drink and snack. So I just, you know, I love life and I didn't want to be bound to any, you know, chronic medication and, you know, in a hover round or anything. No, I'm, you know, I'm not doing that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what um, that's what really got me changing the way that I cook. And then you know I have to shout out TLA. I'm a I'm a proud student of the lead attorney. And when I heard him say, "If you're over 35, start a YouTube channel." So they took some getting used to. I came straight from the airport, and my Uber actually took me to a place called Tesco, which was like a small convenience store. And I was running around trying to find. Um, the ingredients for today's cooking collab. So do you do your own grocery shopping on a regular or you do your delivery or how do you get um, your... I was actually trying to figure out a system because okay. I, I forget, like I always forget stuff will run out yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, but no, I, um, I just tell my assistant and like okay. she'll order it. So I don't actually go to the store that often. I love grocery delivery services. Honestly, as a, you know, wife and mom, that's actually you know, getting, finding ways to get as much time back as you can. Yeah. Some people really like going to the store. I saw your episode with Auntie Jenny, but <laughs> I use all of the services and um, I just try grocery delivery services. I use the shopping cart kind of like a list. So when I need something or I'm getting down to the end of something, I'll go ahead and put it in the cart, but I won't check out yet. Mm -hmm. So something you may forget like condiments or whatever, then when you go place an order, it's already there. You've been trying to balance it all. Thankfully, since the pandemic, I work from home. Okay. I work remote now. So I still work full time. I work in technology, but now I don't have that two hour commute each way. Yeah. I just don't like walking. I just don't like walking by the crackheads. <laughs> oh, did we pass the... No, if you go the way he wanted to, there's all these crackheads. Oh, dear. <laughs> I just don't like walking by them. <laughs> I'm actually surprised you're out here shopping. I don't know, from, from our vantage point, it's like, it's Pearl. But do you feel like you're just blending in, like one of the um, locals now? It just depends where I'm at. Yeah. So, like, if I go into a room with mostly women mm -hmm. unless they're eastern european or african i would say they haven't really seen my stuff i don't ah. know why those two groups just seem to like me ah, <laughs> it's gotcha. like polish lithuanian well, and you then know why. more conservative yeah, yeah traditional family values yeah. so to answer your question about when the kids are small i have an aunt who runs an in-home daycare and mm -hmm. one of the best pieces of unsolicited advice mm -hmm. that she gave me when we were expecting get a routine as soon as you can Maggie yeah. yeah so as soon as your babies start sleeping through the night you want to try and establish an, a routine that works for your family meaning mm -hmm. start with like after dinner we do bath time and then story time or we sing songs or <laughs> Um, Sorry. <laughs> OMG. I think I died and came back to life twice. I was walking the streets of London with Pearl and her producer and they said, let's go this way. And we just went this way in the middle of the cars, put our hands up and just hope nobody hit us. 
I'm used to waiting for the walking sign at a crosswalk, but I guess when in Pearl's world, you do what Pearl does. I feel like jaywalking is part of the London experience. Now, I'm from Chicago. I went to college and in college, the whole idea is if they hit you, you get your tuition paid for. So I honestly just didn't feel like walking around and I was like, let's just go. I looked at my producer, he was like, let's go. We're going. <laughs> But just something that you all can um, repeat. Mm -hmm. And it's good for two reasons. It gives the kids something to expect and it kind of settles them. Because I know we think, oh, just let the kids be free. Kids actually like structure and they need structure. It's mm -hmm. very important. Plus, it also helps you as a mom. You may want to have a date night with the hubs. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to tell anybody who's watching your kids, this is our this routine. Is exactly. How exactly. To do that. Because if not, they're going to be doing their best to figure it out, mm -hmm. the kids are going to be like, ah, and that's not what you want. Mm -hmm. I'm an immigrant. I was born in Ghana. Mm -hmm. We came to America when I was one, but my parents are still very African and very traditional. Mm -hmm. So that was the expectation. At 13, I was cleaning the whole house top to bottom, mm -hmm. doing everybody's laundry, not just mine. Mm -hmm. And whenever my mom was cooking, my dad said, Maggie, in the kitchen. And I didn't really have a choice. So for me, I thought that was normal. Right. Until I went to college and started going into corporate and I heard women, I'm not cooking. He can fix his own plate. I was shocked. Mm -hmm. I was like, how in the world? <laughs> My mom told me so many times when I was playing with Barbies, Maggie, if you don't cook for your children, who will cook for them? Mm -hmm. So that was just my upbringing. So mm -hmm. that's just who I am. I didn't think about that she just got off the flight and then maybe we should get the groceries delivered. But you know what? I feel I'm giving her the UK experience. Welcome to London. So guys, we made it to Sainsbury's. Um, if you guys want to sponsor us, you know, feel free, feel free. Um, Maggie, what are we getting today? All right, so Pearl wants to cook a full day of meals for her future guys. So we're gonna do breakfast, lunch, and dinner with dessert. So we have most of the stuff at home. So breakfast is gonna be French toast with some fruit, some syrup, cinnamon, nutmeg, and um, I don't know, something else good. Mm -hmm. Lunch is gonna be a sandwich. We're gonna do a club sandwich. And then dinner is going to be a steak, roasted potatoes and veggies. And we're going to do those TLA fried apples. So we're going to pick up a few ingredients here and then get cooking. We are looking for a couple things here. So some berries to go with the French toast, uh, some pickles to go with the sandwich. And I think we got some, I think we're looking for some potatoes as well. Do French toast. So we need bread. We have that. Mm -hmm. Eggs. We have that. Milk. We have that. Cinnamon and nutmeg. We have that syrup we do have banana but if you want to get some berries you could do like a raspberry or what is, what is your favorite berry strawberries all right so we can cut up some strawberries so let's get some strawberries okay. so i'll hold the basket for you oh thank you absolutely um, all right we'll do some blackberries Ooh, yes and then with berries i know you like smoothies you could make smoothies with them mm -hmm. you could do like a yogurt bowl with them okay. lots of options Okay, so you also wanted to do bacon and learn how to poach an egg. Mm -hmm. So we have six eggs. I think that's enough unless you think we, we need- We have extra eggs. Anyway. We have extra yeah. eggs. Okay, we do need to get vinegar to poach the eggs. Sainsbury, why are you gonna kick me out? It's just like- When I went out with Pearl, and her uh, producer, I was politely asked to leave the grocery store, which has never happened to me before. So I need to take a look at the company that I keep. <laughs> These security guards are so annoying, but when people irritate me, when they're just Karens for no reason, like it's going, like it's gonna really affect your life. If I video myself in Sainsbury's, what is the difference between my man blessing, my man blessing, holding a camera versus me holding my phone and recording. You wouldn't even know. Do you know how many people film low quality videos in Sainsbury's all the time? If anything, I would like to speak to the president of Sainsbury's corporate. I would understand if I was like putting it in people's faces, but let me vlog in peace. Do you know how many like other YouTube shows do like shopping hauls and all kind of videos? This is why, this is what I'm saying. This is why the UK uh, just that's gets true. on my nerves. It's like a UK thing. Um, if you guys want to sponsor us, 
<laughs> Please stop kicking us out of your store. All right, so when it comes to the cooking, I would say to answer your original question about how do you get it all done, Yeah. being aware of is this something that you really love to do or something that you just need to get done? Because you would approach it differently based right. on. So that would be my first question. Where are you with cooking? Where am I? Well, I like, I like cooking. I hate cleaning. Okay. <laughs> okay. I am in life. Um, I like cooking because you can be creative and I really like desserts. So oh that's yeah. That's like a problem. Okay. Like the thing is I'm just so busy. So sometimes it can be overwhelming trying to get it all in, but. That's true. And that's something that I had to learn. There's cooking to get everybody fed and settle for the night and then there's cooking when you have time to experiment and have fun with it and i kind of learned the hard way if i see a recipe and i'm like whoo i want to try that mom can you just make spaghetti okay for the 840th time <laughs> i'll make spaghetti so ultimately it's about giving your family good wholesome nourishing food and they like what they like so you would find out what those are you know start with the husband then when you have children mm -hmm. introduce them to a lot of different things and get to know what they like and kind of work creatively around that mm -hmm. so if you are unfortunately a working mom you'll have to take shortcuts I watched a lot of 30 minute meals I might marinate or thaw some stuff out during the day when I'm at work but I was just very intentional about what I was doing. So on my commute home, I'm mentally scanning my refrigerator. Okay, I've got this, I've got that, then I'm gonna do this, then I'm gonna do that. So literally I had already made the meal in my mind. Mm -hmm. All I had to do was execute. So I am a coffee drinker. Now we all know that Pearl has given up coffee. So to be kind to her, I also uh, had a chai latte today and it was actually really good. We sat outside, it was windy. So I think I blew away and came back, but uh, the service was good and the coffee was excellent. I enjoyed it. I kind of wanted a chai tea, but I was like, I don't know. Why don't you get a chai tea? You're right, I should get a chai tea. Because I'll get a coffee. <laughs> 30 minutes Absolutely. Yeah. And it's kind of like what I realized was I need a lot of time to figure out like how to do the meals. Yeah. But then once you get it, then you can be faster. But it's like, you're going to mess it up if you're trying to like exactly. do a new record. Because I've done that mistake a couple times. Blessing has had to endure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you're cooking for others, especially when they're hangry, that's not the time to be creative. So one of the things that my mom did, and a lot of moms do this, have a weekly menu. Some also have like a monthly menu. And so you are literally getting like a little calendar template mm -hmm. and putting out what we're gonna have. I would probably start with a weekly. Then how you just- you, How do you put together? Cause that's it. I've been having so much trouble organizing it in my head. Yes. Yeah. I don't know why, it seems simple, but I'm like, for some reason it's- No, don't beat yourself yeah. up about it. It's definitely a learned skill, you know? So mm -hmm. I applaud you for, mm -hmm. for wanting to get it get it right when I was first married and had the kids and you go from you know just being a couple to yeah. your family size doubles it's very jarring because it's like I'm hungry too but everybody's looking at me it's like what, what are we gonna have I don't know what are we gonna have but I realized okay I got to get this together there's several templates online or you can just start writing from scratch mm -hmm. one of the hacks I would do is probably pick two proteins that you want to make okay. so you don't overdo it. So if it's chicken and beef mm -hmm. or fish and chicken or whatever you eat mm -hmm. and then find, let's say you're going to plan for weekday meals because those are the busy school days. If we walked into that store and asked for permission, they would have said no. That's we true. went in, we got the footage we needed. Now they kicked us out at the end. Fine, <laughs> fine. But but it's better that way. I'm not a fan of, of, of rules for no reason, for no reason. Mm. So when you have kids and they say, mom, why do I have to go? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So when you have kids and they say, but I'm not tired, why do I have to go to bed? What are you going to tell them? <laughs> go to bed. <laughs> because I said so. Because I said so. <laughs> so when Pearl, little, little Pearl says, but there's no reason for that. I don't like rules for no reason. <laughs> That's so true. She's so funny. <laughs> Look, you could always pull the parent card. As long as you're being provided for, you live in this house, you go by the rules. Isn't that how we grew up? So She's got it. She's got it. <laughs> oh, I'm having so much fun, guys. Have you said, would you say I'm crabbier now since I've given up coffee? I'm not quitting coffee. <laughs> <laughs> he says I should bring it. No, I did quit coffee. 
I haven't had coffee since December. Chai tea. I did quit coffee. I am coffee free since December. Blessing. Stop playing with me. Stop trying me. This is not the week. Let me know if we should grab a Keurig for the... <laughs> I make a mean cup of coffee. I've been told that. Yeah. But if you can't have it, I understand. There's lots of different things. I talk a lot about that on my channel. I give people um, a lot of ideas for substitutes because we're all creatures of habit. And if you're just used to putting sugar in it, you may not even know there's a way to get that full coffee flavor without all those calories. So, so what was your life like day to day as a mom? Day to day as a mom. All right. So like as a working mom, would you say you were like submissive to your husband? You were, yeah, all that. Because they always say you can't, I can't be submissive if I have to work, right? That's always the common. So to answer your question, the answer is no, and I regret that. You asked if I was submissive to my husband, and that's why I started this community. You've heard about the Wives Club, but even though I grew up with very traditional values, I did get kind of caught up in that modern woman mindset, you know, going to college and then going to graduate school. But for me, it was really corporate America and being in that competitive environment. I thought it was 50-50. I thought I could do everything a man could do. I thought I could do it until I was 65, until I hit the wall. And when you put yourself in that position where you become the breadwinner, it's natural that you think that, no, you know, we're going to do this. And um, when I got divorced, my ex-husband actually said, well, I thought you were driving this bus. Wow. And that was a really hard lesson for me. So since the divorce, I've been in a long-term re relationship with kind of like a 1% kind of guy, which means for me, I've had to do a lot of work to change from that 50-50 modern mindset to being more of a traditional support system. And I couldn't be happier, but I have bumped my knee and skinned my, you know, bumped my head and skinned my knee. Um, Are you still working? I am, but now I'm working from home and it was actually his idea. And I remember, so I had that big corporate job in the office before the pandemic and when we all got set home for a couple weeks to sit this thing out I was one of those itching to get back right I was trying to go for that promotion I was always trying to go back for that next thing and when I ended up being home for all those what two years I realized I love it I don't have two hours on the road I can finish my last zoom meeting of the day and make a, a nutritious meal for the kids um, I was so happy and I started thinking I don't want to go back. But then you wrestle with that natural instinct of wanting to be home and be nurturing. And then that programming of get to work, get to work, get to work. And uh, my guy actually said, you know, why don't you look for something that lets you stay at home? You're happier, you're healthier, it's better for you. And I actually took offense to that, kind of thinking, oh, you just want me to stay at home? You don't want me to get their promotion? And um, I went for a job that I didn't get. And I said, well, I guess I'm stuck at home but it's been the best decision ever. Mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes guys say things to look out for us, but we don't always like think of it that way, yeah. you know? Cause we're like, well, why can't I do what I, you know? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And the men in our lives, I've heard you talk a lot about your dad and your brothers. What I have learned with men, they're not gonna say anything if they don't care. A lot of times we think, oh, they're telling me don't go here or don't do this. And we're thinking, you can't tell me what to do. But if men really don't care, they don't say anything. They will walk right past and say, not my problem, not my family. So when you have a man who's trying to tell you something, it's because he cares. Wow, yeah. I never thought about it like that. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, because men, especially high value men, they don't have time to waste. Even in relationships, my guy's only gonna tell me one or two times and then he's gonna stop talking. So I have to figure it out and I have to listen and get on the program. But it's so much better when you just happily submit, but you have to choose the right one to submit to. Mm -hmm. So how did you find him? Where'd you, where'd you get? <laughs> well, I can't imagine. So how old were you when you got divorced? Okay, so I met my ex-husband at 18. He was my college boyfriend, the only boyfriend I had in college. And then we got married right after. And it was one of those things where we've been together this long it was the next logical step uh, great guy excellent dad I don't take anything away from him um, and I was married for 10 years and I absolutely love being married and I would remarry again but the marriage did end up in divorce because you can't have you know two people two, leading. Two mm -hmm. yeah. so in my 30s I actually um, reconnected with someone from childhood and what it showed me two things number one never burn a bridge because you never know where life is gonna take you. And then, you know how Kevin, Kevin Samuels always used to say, men need those 10 years to kind of be heads down and eat you know what because they have to build themselves. Mm -hmm. 
the adult version of him is so much different and so much more mature than who he was as a kid. And so that's... Um, Were you guys, did you guys fight as a kid or something? Uh, <laughs> you just didn't like him? <laughs> no, I did like him, but it was one of those things, you know, as women, we're ready before men are. Yeah. And that's why my, my ex-husband was seven years older than me. Um, but now the only way that you can be, for me, the only way that you can be in relationship with someone that's your peer, you have to wait for the man to mature because as a woman we're ready in our teens and 20s but they need that time mm -hmm. so how long have you guys been together it's been 12 years now oh my gosh you've been with him 12 years i didn't realize it'd been that long yeah yeah i had a husband and then i've had this relationship and um you know there's children involved and i used to think oh we're gonna have this big beautiful blended family but the hard truth is men want their own children and I have to understand and respect that. So I have to finish the job that I started. I'm grateful. My ex-husband and I are 20 minutes apart. He's remarried. His uh, new wife is great to the boys, so we co-parent. But with kids in high school, you know, mm -hmm. I'll be able to live my, my life soon. What, what were some of the challenges that came with having like a mixed family? Well, one of the hardest things for me and uh, the boy's stepmom is great. She does a lot for the boys that she doesn't have to. But if I'm being honest, my pride kind of got in the way because I'm their mother and their uh. dad treats me as mom. But when they're over there, she has a voice and a say so. Mm -hmm. And when we got divorced, um, I was single, my ex-husband was single. And so we just made decisions with each other. Mm -hmm. And then once he got remarried, I would say, hey, can we work out this scheduling thing or this school event or whatever? Let me talk to the missus and I'll get back to you. And I was kind of like, oh, you didn't like that? No. Because a lot of times I think people think it's going to just be an easy ride. But COVID, like I see it with my, my older sister had two kids and then she remarried and then got like a son. And it's, it's tough, the yeah. blending of families. Yeah. So um, how did you guys end up making it work? Well, you have to put the children first. And when I got divorced, whatever happened between me and my ex-husband, I told him this. I said, I take that to my grave. You are their father, and the relationship that you have with them will be the one that you all create. I'll never get in the middle of that. I think it's just separating your relationship from him mm -hmm. with his relationship uh, with the kids. So mm -hmm. it's really another one of those decisions. Mm -hmm. It's just maturity and just saying, you know what, this is what's best for the kids. Because kids do need both parents. And I'm a boy mom. I have two sons, mm -hmm. and so I know I can only be mom. They're as big as me, <laughs> you know. <laughs> they listen to their dad in a different way than the way they listen for me. Listen to me, mm -hmm. and I'm so glad because I had some single girlfriends when the divorce happened that were ready to rah rah and kick up the dust. I'm like, no, we're not doing that. Mm -hmm. This is their father, and you have no idea how much you're going to need him. And I'm so glad that we have a good relationship. Have you ever thought about like leaving your job altogether? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm hoping maybe this will be my exit plan. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm kind of phasing out. So I've been corporate since college, working in technology. I'm in a masculine environment. It's data driven. It's highly competitive. It's long hours. So at least now I'm out of the office. So that was one step away. Mm -hmm. Now I work 100% remote so I can work from wherever. Mm -hmm. So that allows me to have that flexibility. I never want to go back into the office. So I feel like I should work as long as the boys are in school. Mm -hmm. And I think our boys are probably going to take the military route because they need some extra maturity. Mm -hmm. And so in a few years, you know, I might be able to to step away completely. Do you think that corporate is a bad, like would you go down the corporate path again if you, if you had to do it again? Yes, but with very clear intentions as to why. Mm -hmm. If you don't control your corporate career, it will control you. And I learned that long after. Meaning, I would probably go into corporate to get some skills, you know. I mean, corporate America has been great for me. Paid for my MBA, great benefits, all of that. But it's cost a lot as well. So I would have a timeline, especially if I were married, work out a timeline with your husband when you can set it down because my guy and I now we have a plan where by 55 I should be able to walk away I'll take it you know it's better than 65 if I were doing it alone um, so yes I would go with intention of how long you're gonna make it work because I think if you ask anybody who's been corporate after about 10 years you've seen it all the restructuring the layoff the new leadership you know the changing of mission and goals it's wash and rinse and repeat 
but get as much as you can and bring those skills into something that will benefit your family and your home. Maggie is the sweetest. Maggie's the sweetest. I really enjoyed how self-aware she was and how she really went through life and took lessons along with her and didn't blame anyone else but herself and learned from those and became a better person. I think that's, I thought her life story, I thought it was beautiful actually. She is so nice. I didn't know what to expect. Maybe I thought she'd be a little bit full of herself, but she's really sweet and humble, so generous in person. Have you ever worked corporate? Two years. Ah. Yeah, I hated it though. Mm. I mean, I sold copiers. So it was sales, I was the only girl in the office. See? And it's funny, I didn't realize, you're actually treated a lot better as a girl. Hmm. And this is like the first time I was ever told about like female privilege, in my, in my opinion anyways. Uh, because all everyone would help me and like I just feel like as a woman like men are just more willing to help you where the guys they're like just figure it out like Absolutely. Um, and I remember there was I had two co-workers and they they were like oh and like this guy named Andy only helps you because you're a girl and I was like no didn't I just because I'm so pleasant <laughs> and they're like yeah okay and then I started thinking about it I was like oh like he does that's like they all and it's not like a a creepy thing it's just like a men I feel like have this innate instinct to just like help you. Absolutely, I would agree. And I think we should let them. Um, you've made a comment about it's uh, easier or it's better um, or you get more help as a woman mm -hmm. from men. Yeah, oh. But not from women. Oh That's yeah, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have any women in the office. Uh, okay, yeah, it's very different. And I've had some very good female managers, mm -hmm. but it is very rare. Um, I think the corporate America for me I started to put on that masculine kind of competitive, you know, because that's just what I thought you needed to do to be successful. But yes, I've had some really good male managers kind of help coach me, take me aside, you know, give me the, you know, the advice or the correction or whatever that I needed. And I'm here for it. I absolutely love it. You can open doors and do whatever, but I'm a Southern girl, so I'm used to it. Oh, this was my question earlier. What happened with your coworkers that were in your position? like? Out of, let's say, 10 women in corporate, how many ended up divorced? And how many of the divorced got remarried? Mm. And how many are still single? The majority were single and still are single. Really? Yeah, I mean, you have to Out choose. Out of 10, how many, guess? I would say probably 70%. Wow, uh, yeah. you 70% of the women you work with. Are they your age now? I would say so. Well, now in technology, I work with a lot of younger people. So still, I'd say only about 20% are married. Wow. Um, I don't think that in my field, women who are family focused choose this field. Which is technology, you yeah. said? Mm -hmm. um, most of the men, most of the people that I work with are younger men. There are some women, mm -hmm. um, but you can't have it all at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, I ended up in this space because it's a good fit. It's kind of like the more business side of technology. I can't fix anything. I'm not a coder, <laughs> but it still requires kind of that dedication to the company. And, you know, for me, I'm able now to balance both, but I got caught up on that hamster wheel, you know, mm -hmm. getting the promotion, getting the big bonuses, mm -hmm. getting that big head, thinking, oh, I'm really doing something until they restructure and you're made redundant. And it's like, oh, wow, okay. Mm -hmm. But luckily for me, and I, I just say it's because of my upbringing, because both of my parents came here for education and I saw them work and go to school. They're both PhDs. So mm -hmm. I saw my mom work and take care of the family and advance in her education. So I knew you can walk and chew gum at the same time. Well, what I realized too is a lot of like people in your position have a leg up because you guys grew up, like you did all the chores, you did all of that. Yep. And it's kind of like when we have like single mothers often, like they can't really teach their kids that. Because it's like a lot of times if the mom's gone or the dad, like the, who's gonna teach it to them, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I just I realized, like, saying. I mean, don't get me wrong, I have a ways to go with it, too. Mm -hmm. But it's just, like, I didn't realize how much, like, of a disadvantage, like, being in a single-parent household, especially when the dad's, like, not in the picture at all. 100%. Because it's, like, there's basic skills that people just have no one to learn from. Mm -hmm. 
I have been really shocked. I, like I told you the way I was raised, I thought everybody was doing what I was doing as far as cooking, cleaning, taking care of the house and making straight A's and being a Girl Scout and doing all of that. That's just what the expectation was. But I agree with you. I mean, I don't advocate, you know, I would never say, you know, go out there and be a single mother. I tried to keep it together as long as I could, but ultimately the marriage did end. I think you need to have a support system, mm -hmm. but you also have to make it a priority. And where you know that you're not good at this, you have to seek that out. You have to put your pride to the side. For example, my youngest son, he's very smart. However, he doesn't always make good decisions. And so when he goes to dad's on the weekends, that's great. But, you know, during the week, I told you to do something and you gave me back talk. So dad and I talked, dad comes from a military family and he said, put him in military school and I didn't want to cried 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 I'm thinking oh my gosh this is where you know the bad ones go and all of that and my guy actually said no Maggie that's what he needs and so listening to men who know better mm -hmm. even if whether I have a relationship with them or don't mm -hmm. we put him in military school on a roll and everything and so you know for me that's the answer to if you don't have those whatever it is domestic skills or disciplinary skills or whatever you have to seek it out because it's necessary mm -hmm. yeah okay well i'm ready to get cooking all right yeah. let's get cooking sure. do you ever get starstruck like when you see people or meet other youtubers or anybody that you admire or? um i really am sad i never got to meet kevin samuels i it's his birthday today i think too absolutely yeah uh, i actually booked a session with him to create a community of like-minded and marriage-minded women and that's where he came up with the Wives Club. And I'm so glad that I did because I put it off for so long because I was terrified. I thought he was going to rip me to shreds. Well, I wasn't sure what to expect. Either I was going to be cooking with Pearl, so we would be cooking side by side, or I could be teaching Pearl how to cook. So I asked her what she wanted to do, and she said she wanted me to teach her. So I was the coach today, and everything that you see on this episode, Pearl actually made it herself. I'm actually kind of surprised. I didn't know if she could even boil water. So as you guys know, I've been struggling in the kitchen, just struggling, struggling, struggling. And I have not perfected a couple things. I, I need to work on it, you know? Mm -hmm. So today Maggie is gonna show me what I would make in a day if I were a wife for my husband. Absolutely, so Pearl wants to do three meals and a dessert, so we're gonna start with breakfast. It's gonna be French toast, bacon, and Pearl is gonna learn how to properly poach an egg. Then for lunch, she's gonna make a sandwich, and then for dinner, she's making a steak with roasted potatoes and veggies, and we're gonna do the TLA fried apples for dessert. I One of the things that I struggled with when I was newly married and cooking was getting everything done in order so that it's all hot and ready at the same time. So if we're gonna be doing French toast, bacon, and poached eggs, I would probably start with the bacon to go ahead and get it done and crispy because that's something that mm -hmm. can kind of sit. And then we will do the French toast and mm -hmm. then post the eggs. So you can think about the order of what you wanna cook. This is UK bacon. Now, the UK people don't even understand why is this. Do you understand why this is bad blessing? Yeah, they don't even know what they're missing. In your air fryer, you can probably just put a couple strips down. Do you spray? Uh, do you coat it with anything? I usually just do. I, I usually put in a pan and I put butter in it. Okay. But I could, we could, I have other oils. So one of the things my mom taught me when uh, I was learning to cook, because my mom is a retired, we'll say home science teacher. So she always cooked for the family. But one tip she said, cook with your senses. Mm -hmm. So use a recipe as a guide. Yes, I do have a cookbook. Maggie has a cookbook, mm -hmm. but use recipes as a guide. So use all of your senses, your sight, your touch, your smell, mm -hmm. sound. So listen to food, like with popcorn, listen to when it stops popping. Smell your food, catch it before it burns. Look at it, don't just set it and forget it. If it's starting to get a little brown, go ahead and take it off the heat taste as you're cooking as long as it's not raw so really get in there and use all of your senses when you cook all right so this is a very big bowl totally fine let's go ahead and get the eggs and the milk and we're going to make the batter for our french toast all right so you've got four eggs in here and you would just adjust your eggs based on how many you're making so if you're going to do like one serving which is i don't know 
uh, two slices of bread, which would be four triangles. You could probably do that with uh, one egg. Excellent. Excellent. Perfect. Just a little bit of flavor. You're doing great. Cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice. Perfect. So enough for more. A little more. Okay. Hey, you know what? You're making this for your husband, so you yeah. make it the way that he likes it. <laughs> Do you put sugar in it too, right? I don't. Oh, because you're, you're, you're the healthy. Well, I try because I have whale tendencies. <laughs> what I do is I eat sugar-free, dairy-free, and gluten-free. That's why I am the substitute teacher because I use sugar substitutes, dairy substitutes, and gluten substitutes. Mm. We're cooking some French toast. Now, I can already make a decent French toast but I would really like Maggie to get me to the next level. I feel like my French toast is girlfriend level French toast. I need Maggie to get me to wife level French toast. I wanna give, I wanna give the staff a breakfast that they're like, wow, that's a wife. Like, oh my God, I wish my girlfriend did that for me. Well, it sucks. <laughs> And so when you're cooking, you want to um, try and get everything to be ready at the same time, meaning I made this mistake when I was first starting out. I would have soaked all of my um, slices of bread and then waiting for the skillet to cool. So these are just some of the things you pick up with practice. All right, so we are turning on, and we're gonna use a non-stick pan for French toast. You can use a griddle. You can use anything that has a surface that's gonna make it easy for you okay. to get up underneath there and flip it so you get that beautiful color. Okay, so first put in this. All right, so we've got probably a tablespoon of butter. Um, that's good, and what I do is I like to let it melt down. Mm -hmm. okay. And then what I do is I just pick up the handle and let it swirl oh, around mm -hmm. once it gets hot. So give that a couple minutes. Go ahead and pour all of it if you can. Oh, all of it, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like so go ahead and press it down, mm -hmm. great. Okay. Now, so you see why I would use like something with raised sides, but you're, you're doing great. Yeah. Now over here, I'm waiting for the butter to like kind of sizzle a little bit. All right, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to move. Oh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So you wanna keep that close to where you're cooking so you don't have that far to go. You're doing great. Mm -hmm. So while that's kind of cooking and seeing, I always wanna have like a little kitchen towel to keep your hands clean or yeah, wash yeah, as yeah. you go. Okay. Whenever you're cooking something like pancake or mm -hmm. French toast or like that steak we're gonna make, mm -hmm. when you put it in a hot pan, you wanna kind of leave it and let it set. That's oh, don't move it. Right. Oh, okay, That's okay. how you get that little like um, coloring on there, the little browning, the oh. little char. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, can we check on our bacon? Yes, yes. All right, we got bacon cooking. Okay. How does it look? I feel like it needs to be, well, it kind of looks different here. I could, can we flip it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Would you cook it a little bit more? Yeah. I would too, yeah. I just, I just, Too hot? Do you have tongs or I don't know, I'm <laughs> just, just reach it in there? I'm just like a baller. <laughs> She's a baller with the bacon. That's no, totally okay. fine. Right. Here's a little hack, mm -hmm. and it's fine for now putting this on a serving plate, but what you can do is you can have your oven like on low mm -hmm. and have like a baking, um, a baking sheet. Yes, and oh. then you put your, fr mm -hmm. so pancakes or French toast. That's another thing that you can do, just kind of keep things warm. And if you really want to be fancy, mm -hmm. you can put your plates I used to put serving plates in the oven, so when you serve the steak and the potato and the bread, it would still be warm. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's take a look at our French toast. Okay. How are we doing? Ooh, you hear that little crust? Yeah. When you, uh huh. Yes. There you go. So one. that texture is coming along. All right. Okay, let's see. Check on your bacon. I put it in for like. <laughs> this English bacon is just. <laughs> You are a baller reaching in there. Once you have this nice little crust on there, so this sear, what you have here. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm, once you have this nice little sear, you can move it around. It's just when you first put it down on the hot plate, mm -hmm. that's when you want to leave it so you can get that going. I think I'm going to wait until these are done. I think that's a great idea. So I know you want to have a large family. So when you have like multiples of these like mm -hmm. batches and batches, what you would do before you start cooking is go ahead and turn your oven on low, kind of as like a warming place while you're doing everything. Uh, so like a, we had a warming drawer growing Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Open the oven. <laughs> that way you don't have to transfer. There you go. Okay, yeah, like, <laughs> and just add it to your stack. Excellent. Oh, I see. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. So let's take the whole skillet to the oven. 
There you go. There if you want to turn it over and check, that way you don't have too far to walk and you don't risk dropping yeah. your food. Excellent. All right, let me get the other feet. Perfect. Okay. Perfect, you're doing great. I'm just gonna turn this a little bit for you. Okay. Look at you, come and get it. We got a stack. Yeah. Look, at, look at Pearl, y'all. Yeah. Look at Pearl, y'all. See, this one I feel like needs a little longer. Okay, Can I leave this one absolutely, okay. yeah, absolutely. You I, cook it I, until? I just like it a little bit more brown. <laughs> Pearl's making breakfast, y'all. Look at this French toast. <laughs> Yeah. She, not, she got made for YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a YouTube channel. Can I shout out my yeah, channel? Yeah, of course, of course. So Maggie the Substitute Teacher is my YouTube channel, and I do live stream every day. I am a mom and a cook. I'm not a professional chef. I've been cooking for the family for a really long time, but on my health and wellness journey, I need to incorporate sugar-free, dairy-free, and gluten-free substitutes. So that's why I'm Maggie the Substitute Teacher. It looks good? Yeah, it looks okay. good. Okay, wonderful. Ah. Wow, so let's get the plate with a paper towel. You can even do this one. There we go. Excellent, this look at Pearl, come and get it. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. You're doing great. Got a whole stack of French toast. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely, all right. Let's finish the French toast so we can focus on the poached egg. But well, I can put this in the Yep, oven. you can move your bacon into the, your warming tray. Okay. Looking good. All right, Pearl is cooking. You got a platter of French toast okay. and a platter of bacon. <laughs> Let me show y'all her bacon. Now this is English bacon, but she got it nice and crispy in the air fryer. Excellent. All right, look at you. I didn't even have to say it. Look at her, y'all. Look yeah. at her. Go, Pearl, go. All okay. right. Here, our butter, we just ran out. Look at this. Mm. Pearl is cooking. Pearl has got her little poached egg jiggly. So we'll leave it on the paper towel for now. And then you would do your salt and pepper on this egg. Yeah. Okay, you can, okay, flip it. Let's get a plate and just put it on there and flip it gently. I think bacon is done, French toast is done. Um, are you doing one more poached egg after that or is, cause you wanna do four? Yeah, one more. Okay, do you want me to do, no, you're gonna, you're gonna practice it. I'm just gonna start cleaning this area okay. so that you can start plating and serving because your family's hungry, all right? Mm -hmm. The kids are hollering, everybody's getting hangry. Oh no, not the kids. Exactly, all oh, four no. of them. <laughs> oh no. All four of them that you want. So we gotta make sure we get the food ready Timmy, for Timmy, Daniel, I told you it's coming. I know. I told you. Is it ready yet? Oh my God, just wait a sec. Do you e want to do it? Oh exactly, no. Exactly, exactly. No. She's ready to be a mom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Timmy. <laughs> that looks incredible. Look at guys. Look at guys. Look at look at. I got. You could call me wifey. Where's my ring? <laughs> Where's my ring? <laughs> but no, honestly, this looks beautiful. And why does it look beautiful? So for those of you all who like poached eggs, you did a really good job. You don't have all the stringy yeah. white bits on there. And I can tell just by looking at it, see how it jiggles, but it's not too wet on the inside. Excellent. Great job. Mm -hmm. Do you want to cut up? your strawberries yes is there a way that you like to cut them i always cut them in fours i do the same excellent I all right just go like um okay that's an option um <laughs> do, <laughs> no i cut the head off too uh, but you're using a butter knife is oh. there a reason <laughs> now just curious do you wash your fruit maybe okay what is that can, can you read what does this say <laughs> Wash before use. <laughs> Just, you know, yeah. I mean. I feel it, like it's never killed me. You know what I mean? Well, then, hey, this is your meal. Husband. You know, <laughs> it's fine. I'll wash Welcome it. Welcome to I'll the. Wash it. No, I'll wash it. Now, are you the type that actually serves makes the plate and serves them? Or do you just put everything out and let people help themselves like family style? Mm, I usually do a plate. Okay. But if it's two, if it's more than two, then it's family style. Okay. All so right. I guess in this case, it would be family style. All right. But you do believe in making a plate for your husband, right? Yes. And I would encourage you to serve him first mm -hmm. and then serve the kids or anybody else. So always make sure you take care of the hubs. Yeah, f these kids. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. What have I gotten myself into? Now, what do we, now you guys might not know this. We just did a bunch of new hires. We are high on expenses this month. Pearl is stressed. Pearl's stressed out. You might want to add that to wife school, Pearl, because <laughs> dropping the F-bombs might not be Dan the Dan best. Damn it. 
This looks beautiful. Y'all, look at Paul. I'm going to take a picture and tag you. This is incredible. All right, so you got your eggs. Perfect. I'll get my husband's plate. Yes, yes. Make your husband's plate. Absolutely. All right. The kids can come later. I've a corrected it. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Hubs has got an appetite. Oh, is this, are we good for the hubs? I have an obese husband. <laughs> you married a whale? I married a whale. Okay. I'm not going to do it for you, but okay. I'm just going to tell you're, you. You're so shopping. usually you need to shake it up a little bit. Okay. And then I uh, point it down and I usually just do like a small little dollop and then raise up as I'm going. Kind of like okay. a little cone while you're pressing. So give that a little try. Here? Okay. I think so. I haven't seen one like that. In my hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so in the middle? However you want to do it. I, I would do it in the middle. And I was like, how would you do it? In the middle. Okay. Uh, okay. Nice. And then you want to dust with a little cinnamon. bit of sweet cinnamon. All right. On there for him. I'm just noticing it's a wide mouth. So yeah, a little goes a long way. Very, very good. Ve Where there is my we go. There we go. Wow. <laughs> Look at breakfast. Breakfast is served, <laughs> b****. <laughs> That's just like a reaction. <laughs> We're going like one step forward and three <laughs> steps back. Um, so everybody can serve themselves. Okay. Just strawberries in the bowl. Okay. So make sure your husband is taken care of. I'll clean up. Well, you know, sometimes as a mom, we eat last if we eat at oh, all. Oh, you're right. Okay. <laughs> that sounds horrible. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. How are you feeling as far as the level of work to do this? Was it a lot? It was more than I thought, mm -hmm. but it, it was good though. Mm -hmm. It was fun. Okay, it good. Was fun. Excellent. So, mm -hmm. Oh, I understand the whipped cream a little See, better now. Look at See, that. I'm improving, guys. You are. You are. Okay. Look, I didn't even have to say anything. Look at your presentation. Look, look at your little try. We got a little bacon. bacon. So we got to try the lunch. Hold on. Let's see if we have enough. Mm -hmm. well, look at Pearl. I'm, I'm, I'm washing dishes. Pearl is setting the table. Kids are washing up, they're in the bathroom, they're running. I want some, I want some. Don't eat it all. Look at you making a whole breakfast spread. Mm. So when your kids have their friends over and you're doing slumber parties, if you have girls or if you have boys and they're coming up from air on their video games, Pearl's gonna be in the kitchen cooking it up or you're just gonna say, I'm ordering pizza. <laughs> So now when they ask me what I bring to the table, I can say I make a mean French toast. Yes, taste it first. Now this one over here, our yolk cracked, so mm. I would probably eat that one if you're going to taste it. Oh, you don't like it too runny? Oh, no, I do. Okay. Yeah, I would probably eat that one because mm. I always serve myself the, the ugliest yeah. one. Mm -hmm. So always serve your guest and your family the best one. Who do you think made that? I don't know, but it looks good. <laughs> here, child. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Thanks, Mom. Diane's been a shithead this week. <laughs> you know, she's been fighting with her brothers, but it's okay. We'll let it slide. <laughs> we'll still feed her. Round one. One, one kid is round done. Blessing, are you ready? <laughs> I want to hear what the, yeah, I want to hear what the grown men have to say yeah. about the grown man plate. All right, all done. Clean plate club. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking a picture of me. Ay, look at that. Pearl, you did it. You did it. Oh my goodness. Oh, wait, I forgot pepper on that. One okay. second. Hold on. Hold on. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. She's serious. There you go. Guys, this is my second producer, King. Oh, all right. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to go through lunch next. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It was good. It was good. Wow, we did good. <laughs> Auntie Jenny, a stripper lady. Oh my God. <laughs> come, come. I didn't know if they were talking about me. That is not the kind of cooking class that I do. Apparently we're taking a trip to a strip club. Hey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah apparently. Yeah, I was told that we're going. After the conversation we just so, had, I think. Um, Pearl and Auntie Jenny are going to strip club and then I have to go there to make sure that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, of course, of course, of course. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, well. I didn't know they got all the way naked either. I thought they just took off the tops. I think there's a room in the back where more happens, but 
I don't know. <laughs> okay, you go on stage where the pole is, and that's where you take your top off, and then the back queen brings the private dances where you take your undies off. So then, do you guys like have sex with them back no, there? No, they can't touch you. They can't touch oh. you? Oh. Can they ask you to leave with them? Or oh, they do that like 15 times a night. They try. Oh, wow. It, that like doesn't make sense to me because it's like if you're already getting naked for money to but me you, it's you, like do you think having sex is is very close to getting naked for money like i think there's quite a big line between swapping you and you standing there naked nah it's like all the same to me <laughs> yeah it's like if, if you're gonna get naked it's like <laughs> Well, He's I already seen your ass crack. So we're in the kitchen and this nice young lady with the neck tattoos and whatnot came out and we we're serving everybody. We're making the food. She just kind of comes on up to the table and has a plate and she's talking about her family and talking about her lap dances and talking about her boyfriend all in the same conversation. I'm just washing dishes because I'm like, I don't know what happens here. I don't know anything about the stripper life, but uh, we met the stripper and the stripper is not me. So what about like, what you got a man, you cook, clean? What's your like? I do, I do. And even though this is what we were just talking about, I am a very low value female, mm -hmm. but in some aspects of my life, I am quite high. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Mm -hmm. The shipping brings it down. Do you have a dad? I do. He's not around right now. <laughs> he was around when I was younger. We kind of like <laughs> stopped talking, but it wasn't over what I do for a job. What percent of strippers have bad relationships with their dads? Yeah, I didn't really have um, very strong role models when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. I was kind of just left to my own. And I mm -hmm. feel like a lot of women are so quick to try and defend themselves and be like, I do this because I love it. No, we do it because mm -hmm. at some point in our life we've lost control or, mm -hmm. just, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A lot of women don't want to be honest with I'm very honest. Mm -hmm. Like guys was even trying to do the defensive side, I didn't want to put the force. <laughs> um, like they try and do the, oh, but you're not being real with yourself. Like I'm very real with myself. Like my job is an ideal and there's a lot of things that come back. Like, girls like to sit there and be like, well, it makes me independent and it empowers me. There's nothing empowering about it. Mm -hmm. You do it because it's quick and easy money. Mm -hmm. So I've got a dirty brain. I've just come from a show. Look at that. That looks like a mold for something, doesn't it? Doesn't it look like a chocolate mold? I'm just coming up on what have they been doing in the kitchen? It does look like a chocolate mold. Pearl has been. Pearl has been cooking in the kitchen. Auntie, what did you tell Pearl? Uh, what did you say about the food? It was okay. It was a bit sweet, and I don't like. Um, I'm, not, I'm not keen on. Um, I'm not keen on French toast. It's the egg. Oh, I'm sorry. That looks like a really good chocolate mold. But Auntie said it wait. was good. Now she said it wasn't good. Auntie, Auntie, wait, come here. Oh, Auntie Jenny, Auntie Jenny. In private, she told me she liked the food. But then I asked her to repeat it and say, Pearl, listen, Auntie Jenny, what did you think of the food? And then in front of Pearl, I didn't like it. It wasn't sweet enough. I need this flavor. I would have soaked my strawberries. You need thicker toast. I mean, she just blew it to bits. So I think Auntie Jenny's love language is <laughs> constructive feedback. Whose method do I prefer? Maggie's or Auntie's? Gosh, my producer is trying to stir the pot today. I gotta say Maggie's because Auntie was making me whisk with my arm and I just thought that was stupid. So, and it hurt and I had no sympathy. Like sometimes I just want to hear, good job, you're doing great, sweetie. Instead of, you know, well, get on with it. <laughs> Stop whining. You know, sometimes it feels good to whine. Shannon, come okay. back, come back. Okay. Rate the food, one to, one to 10. It's okay, you can be honest. Six? Yeah. Six. Yeah, I'm gonna give it like a six or a six and a half. Six, six, seven, mm -hmm. six and a half. No, it's good for improvement, but it's a good start. What, how could I improve? I think Auntie gave an honest rating. For me personally, I needed more sugar sprinkled on it, brown sugar. Mm. So the crisp, I, I needed brown sugar crystallized on it. Okay. And I didn't get enough cream. And I would have took, I would have took, <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. I would have took the strawberries and I would have marinated them in some balsamic vinegar and a bit, of, and I would have done it like that. That's exactly, okay. Exactly what Ali said. Yeah. That was so in depth. That mm. was great. Yeah. Okay. So, Something to work to. Absolutely. We'll, we'll do it. We could do a next wife school episode. We can perfect it. Yes, we, we can, can perfect, perfect it. it. It was good. It was good. Yeah, it was her first. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. One to one to ten, and how could I improve? Um, I'll rate it an eight. That's how, pretty good. How, how, how could I get a ten? 
I mean, for that one, I, I don't know. Because that was more like breakfast, right? Yes. Um, maybe a mega portion. Helen, come, come. That's actually what I liked about it. I like the post, like that was... It was, it was... Um, the cream, the strawberries, the sweet and the, you know, savoury was amazing. Mm. But I think one thing, I'm such a carb freak, I would like a little piece of bread. I was thinking that too. Texas toast. Do y'all have that up that here? Too. Yeah. Okay. Wait, one to ten. Did you do a rating? One to ten? Uh, I'm gonna actually give it a... I'm gonna give it an eight as well. Eight? Yeah, Alright. We got, we got two eights, two sixes. So average is out of the seven. Did you rate your own? Oh. Yeah, no, I didn't. I feel like, oh yeah, blessing. What's your rating? Nine. Nine? Oh, yeah, I love it. I don't think the staff are giving, giving honest ratings. I mean, honestly, if a 10 is perfect, I do think they liked it. But I mean, when you pay people, <laughs> Okay, now now we're averaging out an eight. Um, my rating, I would say a six, just because oh. I agree with the bread. I feel like the bread has got to be thicker next time. Absolutely. But I, I think I got a good framework, and I can do it next time. For lunch, we're making um, turkey and cheese and ham and cheese sandwiches. We are going to make a club sandwich. You, you know what the men say? They always say, shut up and make me a sandwich. That's all they want. They want silence, sex, and a sandwich. Now... I can't be silent. I'm sorry, I don't bring that to the table. I really don't. Um, but I can make a mean sandwich. Okay. You know, I'm good at putting the bread and the cheese together. Yes. You know. So now that I've thought about it, we are gonna make a club. So I'm gonna actually let you get started. You'll need to slice. Do you know how to properly slice? Oh, we don't have bacon, do we? I gave away the bacon. I just I thought... forgot about that. Well. You know, you can't win them all. It's okay. It's okay. We'll make a, um, a bacon-less club. But you know what? The bacon didn't go to waste. It was all eaten up. Mm. So you can just do... do you to I always toast my sandwiches. I was just about to say that. I'm a toaster. I, okay. I feel like it is not the same unless you toast it. Okay. Let's, let's go with that. So do you know how to properly slice a tomato for, like, sandwiches? No. Okay. I'll show you. I usually just take my knife and slice it. <laughs> yeah, so there's a couple ways. Um, I would do, so you have the little stem here, so then I would put that flat, I'm sorry, I didn't, okay. then I would cut it kind of like that. And I have a little tool that helps me cut straight slices, but yes, if you're going to be putting it like a wedge on a salad, you can do it that other way. And see, if you notice with the bigger knife, oh, mm -hmm, because you don't have to pre apply as much pressure, the weight of the blade, the weight of the knife just makes the blade cut through easier. Your uh, slices, you see how when you have to really press on it, how it smushes. So that's one of the reasons you want to have at least one good quality knife. And you don't have to cut all of them. And then, yeah, I would just peel them back to a, mm -hmm, and snap off the little edges. Yeah. What I would do if I had this lettuce, I would peel off the lettuce pieces that I'm going to use for the sandwich mm -hmm. and then just wash those. Because something about when you wash the whole thing, it spoils faster. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. But so. you can dry those off. You're doing great. So let's think about what's going to go on the sandwich. So I just got mild cheddar. Hopefully that's okay for mm -hmm. you. We have... Um, Deli ham, and this okay. could be any type of meat. It could be um, pastrami, it could be anything. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go ahead and get these um, open up. I think you might have to twist the top just so you have everything ready so as soon as your bread is done. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Thank God for, you saw these on your website. I do, you can go to Maggie you, the Substitute. You can buy, buy them on our website, guys. Absolutely, our aprons are $20. They come in three different sizes. Pearl is wearing the long, I had on the standard. We even have kid sizes. If you wanna bring the kiddos in the kitchen with you, you can customize them for free with your name. We have multiple colors as well. Here we go. Absolutely. All right, so I tried to get everything ready, so I would go ahead and open up my pickles. And when you're spreading, really all you do, you're doing great, you're doing mm -hmm. great. You just want to um, do exactly like you're doing pearl. 
try and get it from edge to edge. And the reason why is when you take a bite of your sandwich or anything that you're eating that's mm. layered, you want a little bit of everything in each bite, all right? So that's why I you want to spread it out to the end. You don't want to do just a big like squirt and let it go. Mm, I see. Mm -hmm. Let me fix the other one mm -hmm. then. You're doing great. So when you cut into it or he bites into it, feed him well, look good. You think he needs a little bit more ham than that? You're right. Yeah, he's I working did, hard. I did. I did marry a big guy, as we spoke about earlier. Right. Right. Yeah. Give him that protein. It'll keep him fuller longer. Mm. Fantastic. All right. I got this one done. All Just right. So get your there. open face. All mm -hmm. right. Do you want to do your turkey? Mm -hmm. Okay. What is your preference on a sandwich? Mine. Uh huh. What meat? What kind of sandwich? Um, I like roast beef. Roast beef or okay. turkey. Those are my two. Gotcha. All right. There you go. Slap that on there. Yeah. And you could even like, um, not for now, but you could take like one of the thin sheets and just kind of roll it and make like, um, you know, like the sandwich on the, like this. Yes. But you would do one at a time. And then I also do a little bit of salt and pepper on a sandwich, especially on the veggies. Just it gives it a little bit of kick. Mm-hmm, excellent. And then I think you have some pickles here, and I don't know if you want to do jalapeno, but it's looking great. I thought I opened this earlier. Oh, shoot. Uh, do we need to call the hubs? Honey, <laughs> can you um, open this for me? It's fine. Uh, King. <laughs> <laughs> you open we need help. Jar? I need muscles. Allow <laughs> him to help you. Excellent. Thank you. Um, are you doing tomato? Yes. Okay. I'll put on the tomato. Mm -hmm. Now those tomatoes look good. They're uh, nice and thick. All right. And I'll show you an easy, that looks good. Ah. All right. I think two is, two is enough. And what, what I probably would have done, which is okay, next time put the tomato on the bread since it's flat mm. because of the mountain of lettuce, it kind of slides down, but it's totally fine. We can skip the jalapenos if they're. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna just put it over here because I already closed that. Yeah, anytime you have something that's a little bit like wobbly on a sandwich, kind of layer it between the flat stuff so that it stays put. Mm -hmm. All right, you like your sandwiches with heat. Let's do oh. it. And what you can do, you can, um, you know, if you're cooking for the family, you can, mm -hmm. you know, if everybody's sitting together at the table, mm -hmm. um, you can have everything ready. But sometimes once his plate is ready, I go ahead and serve him and then. And then get the rest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, so see. he doesn't have to wait. But you're doing fantastic. Feeding. The kids have been outside all day playing. They're coming in hungry. Kids, kids, it's coming. I need you to be patient. <laughs> is it ready yet? Is it ready yet? mustard i don't eat mayo oh yeah it's too bad you'll eat what i put on your plate well that's an option <laughs> what do you think of women that say oh he can make his own food ah then you don't need a man <laughs> <laughs> because uh if you got a good one that's working what's making a plate that's the least you can do of course he can make his own food but here's the deal we have to understand as women if you won't do it somebody else will Woo. so keep that in mind <sighs> okay <Untasted>? children <laughs> children <laughs> they're ready they ain't never they ain't never not hungry it's, it's lunch time yes. all right let me clean two up ham with. and two turkey mm -hmm. all right perfect okay that sandwich was fire that sandwich is fire. I'm, I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. All right, turkey, turkey coming right turkey. up. Turkey or ham, Helen? Thanks, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm. Thank you. All right. Blessing, I hope you like ham. <laughs> oh. Part of being a wife and a mom is serving the family. Mm -hmm. And I actually get a lot of joy out of it. You know, unfortunately, when you think about what about me, what about me? Um, sure, you can rush to the front of the line, but mm -hmm. as a mom, there's nothing like 
the look on your kid's face when they're like, oh, it tastes good, mom. Thanks, mm -hmm. mom. Um, or if your man just kind of comes up and quietly gives you a kiss on the cheek and goes back to his plate without a word. Mm -hmm. It's worth it. So for me, I'll wait. Clearly, I can miss a meal. So, <laughs> but yeah. Wow, clean plate. One to one to ten. One to ten. I'll give this one an eight point five. Eight point five. You're going up. Wow. You're going up. Would you like more? Because I know you want a more portion last. I'll, I'll wait for the steak. Oh. <laughs> okay, waiting for the steak. All right. Oh. Oh. Uh, how how one to ten. One to um, ten. Considering I'm not the biggest sandwich fan, mm -hmm. an eight. An okay. eight. Wow. That was really good. <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, that one, I think the staff gave too low of ratings. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been a ten. <laughs> I watched my mom and, you know, she would teach me, this is how your dad, you know, likes it. Mm -hmm. My mom would always have my dad's food ready as soon as he came home he had his plate and he would sit at the same spot at the table and we all knew not to bother him until he had eaten and gotten out of his work clothes and that was just how it was so for me it's not a far stretch to take care you know of a man because I've seen it modeled and where you're helping people is you know for those who maybe haven't seen it modeled or maybe it was modeled and they didn't pay attention mm -hmm. you know you can learn what is um expected yeah so let's talk about dinner all right so for the steak you've had it marinating for a while so it's got good flavor on it now i will say a disclaimer uh what was that package uh it was like top remember the cut of meat no i don't remember. okay maybe i took a picture of it but it's okay we're gonna still cook it um I would say we'll do the sides first and those can be getting staying warm in the oven because for me whenever I'm cooking something that I'm a little nervous about or needs my attention like a steak or really searing a nice piece of fish I try to keep the sides very simple mm -hmm. get them done and get them out of the way so I'm not having too much going on all right so we're gonna do broccolini this package of uh, little broccoli. Well, this is broccoli and green beans. Mm -hmm. So I would say we would oil these and season them well. Okay. So you can use the same bowl. Okay. And you can actually put a, that whole package in there. Okay. okay. So you've got your broccolini, and this could be any vegetable, uh, a simple oven roast. Okay. So you could either oven roast or you could air fry, but I think. So like one of these. Yeah, let's do that. So let's go ahead and turn the oven up. I think I got everything out. Let's go ahead and turn the oven up to like a 400. Okay. And we'll do an oven roasted. And you know what? We'll do the potatoes and everything. All right. Okay, but first. Oh, sorry. It's okay. You want to oil them. And the reason you want to oil them, do you know why? To make it stick. Exactly. You want the seasoning to actually stick on there. But it's fine. You got a big bowl. And uh, you're just going to toss them in the seasoning vegetable oil or olive oil let's do olive oil either one is fine a better quality oil is is great um yes so, so i would mm -hmm. so. excellent maybe a little dash more okay and then what i would do do you know how you can get in there with your hand or do you know how to toss you almost want to toss and almost like toss and scoop up to you at the same time and that kind of gets them oh, moving around in I the bowl see. okay there you so. go. There you go. All right. So then what you're looking for is you're looking to make sure every little piece of veggie has that nice shiny oil on it. So you okay. did a really good job. You're doing so good. Okay. Um. Um. And with seasoning, all of that is just preference. So however you like your... Um, my uh, kitchen towel. Do you have any other kitchen towels? Because these are kind of soaked. Mm, yeah, somewhere. Before you pull, I would actually, yeah, because you don't want that water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So next time we can um, shake off a little bit of that excess mm -hmm. and try to flat. There you go. Single layer. That's how you get them nice and crispy. The oil plus the heat gives you that crispiness. Okay. That looks beautiful. Okay. okay. 
So now you are ready for the steak. Yes. Okay. Good. How do you do your steak? You do it medium or how do you take your steak? Um, yeah, medium. Medium? Okay. It's how many meals, when you're working full time, how many meals would you cook a week? Oh, I cooked every day. Um, I cooked every day, at least dinner. Um, I still cook every day. Mm -hmm. That's just how I was raised. But in my mind, and I know this sounds really crazy, but it's like I eat every day. So why don't I cook every day? Mm -hmm. I know some people are like, oh, I'll cook for them once a week. But you eat every day. <laughs> so I, like, I just, honestly, my brain, I don't get it. I think a lot of people just do like takeout or like easy bake meals nowadays. Yeah. And you can do shortcuts. Like, honestly, if you're really pressed for time, you can get a rotisserie chicken and one of those like mm -hmm. ma uh, microwave mashed potatoes and open a can of green beans. I mean, it's better than like a... I don't know, like a little a TV dinner or microwave pizza yeah. or whatever. If you're really pressed for time, what I would recommend, all right, what I would recommend, and then we're going to take a look. Do you have tongs or? Okay. I think I might have been here. Okay. I know some things. All right. Let me wash them. Someone's broken on that. <laughs> Dishwasher's not washing. Yeah. What I would recommend if you're really pressed for time Take one shortcut, but try to do something mm -hmm. that's homemade because it's it's not just about the food. It's about the love that you put in the mm -hmm. food. And it really shows how you care when you take the time to feed your family. Mm -hmm. You know, they just, you know, well, you'll see the kids will be like, Mom, it just tastes better when you do it. Because <laughs> I've taught both boys how to cook. They can do everything, just about everything I do they can do. But still, it tastes better when I do it. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite cut of steak? I don't know. I don't really know the difference. <laughs> okay. Um, so most men will probably like like um, like a hefty steak, either like a New York strip or a T-bone or a ribeye. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is looking good. This is good practice. The only thing I would do now, like this one that, that's got this thick end, mm -hmm. I would probably stand it up. Remember how he seasoned all sides? See if it'll stand up in the pan. And you can almost, yeah, perfect. I would probably cut this thinner piece to serve here um yes are you ready to cut it now or you oh, want to get oh i thought that's what you said oh yes i did but let's wait until we cut it right before we put it on the plate let okay. it just rest for a couple more minutes ah uh, beautiful going? sizzling nice even like toss them in the yeah, like mm-hmm oh it looks good some green beans some oh yeah beautiful okay i'm actually going to taste so if you didn't have a microwave, you could get a bigger pan and put the potato. Absolutely. Right. Thank you so much. Put the potato in with it. Yeah. So open that carefully because the steam will come out. So when you're feeding boys or men, uh, one of the hacks that I do, I may have the same protein for everyone. Uh -huh. But for the boys, I'll give an extra starch. So they'll have like potato, rice, pasta, bread, um, something to kind of <laughs> stick to the, the ribs. Uh, if you want to do like a, a leaner version, you could do the steak and just the greens. But that looks beautiful. Great job, great job. Do you want me to uh, try and demonstrate a little bit on this one? So when, once you get there, so you have your, uh, you did a great job there. You have your lines of steak. Mm. So I just kind of turn it across the grain and we're just going to go diagonal. Mm. And you can almost kind of cut it at a bias so you have those little mm. like uh, flat pieces. But I, I just had a Wagyu ribeye and it was like that in the middle. But you could probably serve, serve the hubs. Excellent. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then what I would do for your presentation, like you could get up underneath here and I would probably take like a few pieces that were together and like lift and plate that. Okay. So, but um, however you want to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, okay. It. <laughs> it's okay. No, it looks so good. Okay. okay. And then these three. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, and make sure everybody gets the same amount. You know how the kids will complain. Kids always complain. 
They're always complaining. All right, I'm going to taste this last. They're always running your credit card, too. It's like the kids are always, always complaining. Ooh, Pearl. Mm. All right, let's get it. <laughs> She's going in. You want to feed the family? Hold on. They're circling. They're right. circling. So okay. one little thing you can do just for presentation, you can just wipe. <laughs> Just make sure if you get a little bit of a mess there. Take a picture. Yes, take a picture. You did a great job. Okay, kids. <laughs> kids, come on. Come on, children. You need a dinner, dinner bell? ding a ling a ling My mom used to have a dinner bell. Really? Mm. Okay, wait. We got to give them forks. Mm-hmm. Oh, they are lined up. <laughs> mm. There you go, children. I mean, the steak was good. But I think someone gave it a nine. I mean, a nine is a bit generous. Like, if a 10 is perfect, a nine is almost perfect. You're telling me that that was almost perfect? It's like, I can't trust the people around me. It's like, it's like I think Kanye said when you get famous that you, you no longer grow because nobody tells you the truth. That's how I feel sometimes. Unless I'm around auntie. If I'm being very honest, I was pleasantly surprised. I didn't think she could boil water. Not only did Pearl make everything herself, she wanted to, she enjoyed it. She asked a lot of questions. She took really good feedback. Um, she corrected herself if she did anything wrong. I think Pearl is gonna be a great wife and mother and I actually ate the food myself. It was really good, but she did say she cooks but she doesn't clean. So we've got some more work to do because Maggie's got dish pan hands after cleaning that kitchen. I had a great time. I actually loved this wife school experience. I think I should do it again. And I actually learned a bunch of stuff that I'm gonna like take into my day-to-day -day life. So I make sandwiches a lot. Take notes, boys. So, you know, I, I can make a good sandwich just for all the husbands watching out there. I'm just letting you know.